Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave with you. I hope you're doing well. We are going to talk about something that I think we're getting wrong in podcasting. I think there are there are people getting out there and talking about this specific topic, and they are not considering everything when they get up and talk about this topic. So I want to shed a different light, a different spin on this, and maybe we're not guilty of something that people say we are in podcasting when it comes to our show. Interested? Okay, well, if you saw the title of the episode, you kind of know what I'm going to talk about, but I just think it's something that needs to be addressed, and I want to relieve some stress from you as a podcaster, so let's dive in. Glad you're here. Welcome to the How to Podcast series. So one of the words that we hear tossed around podcasting by other gurus, by experts in the space, by people up on stage, other podcasters talking about podcasting, they talk a lot about pod fade. Now, pod fade is a term that we created, obviously. It didn't really exist back in the day, but because of podcasting, pod fade has been tossed around as a kind of a plague on podcasting, kind of a people looking down on people who quote unquote pod fade. And there's there's a there's a couple things going on around pod fade. So I want to talk a little bit about what the what the industry calls pod fade and what they term that and define it as. And then I want to challenge it for you so we can kind of understand it even more. But the definition of pod fading, according to a link, and I'll have it in the show notes for you where I pulled this from. Um, it was from a website called Podcast Hero. And uh, it's all around what is pod fading, a definition of pod fade. And basically, they talk us through it and give us their insight into what pod fade is. So basically, their definition in the article attached uh, in the notes is that pod fading generally means that you stop your podcast all of a sudden and without notice. I've also heard saying that pod fade is measured by if a certain podcast, yours or someone else's, has released an episode in a certain period of time. If they haven't done that, then they've pod faded. So if you say, for example, you have a podcast and it releases every week, and then you go to every two weeks, and then you go to every month, and then eventually you just don't post at all. They, de they determine that to be pod fading. But what happens is there's a bunch of other podcasts that get lumped into that category because they haven't released a new episode in a, a period of time, short time, long time, but they've, they haven't released a new episode. So for example, I have a show called the Daily Santa Podcast. It's 25 episodes in a row. It's 25 episodes for kids as a countdown to Christmas starting on December 1st, taking you all the way through to Christmas Day. And the idea of that podcast is it's all made for kids, it's fun, it's goofy, and it uh, teaches them a, a value lesson every day on how they can be a good human. Now, that podcast is only available and only really, really used a lot in December because it's meant to be like an advent calendar, a countdown. And in the middle of July, I'm still getting listens, which is exciting. So, but I don't release any new episodes for... 11 of the 12 months out of the year. But does that mean that my Daily Santa podcast has pod faded? Well, I'm not releasing new episodes. So by definition, by some people in the space, that show is pod faded. It's not active. And it's shamed. It's looked down on because it's not releasing an episode every week or every two weeks or on a regular cadence. It's only one month out of the year 25 days in a row, and then it's no more episodes go out. So technically, according to the experts, I have pod faded my daily Santa show. But I push back on that saying, well, podcasting is meant to be evergreen content. Evergreen content is meant to last forever and be relevant into the future, whether or not there is a new episode. So there's a little bit of things going on here around pod fading. And I just wanted to challenge it for you. If you feel like you've pod faded and you feel like you're being shamed for pod fading because you haven't released a new episode, let's put it into another context completely. 
an author will write a book. Now, a book has a beginning, a middle, and an end. A complete set of thoughts wrapped up into a summary and a completion of the book. It's done. Authors don't write a book for the rest of their life, one single book, and never stop writing. Eventually, they have to publish the book if they're going to sell it. So a book has a a logical beginning, middle, and end. You can have a podcast that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It doesn't have to be where you're going to release 900 to 10,000 episodes and you're going to re- record an episode every week for the rest of your life. It doesn't have to be like that. There's people who are going to tell you that that's normal to podcast every week, but it's not mandatory. So if you have if you have a topic you want to cover in a X number of episodes, you have an intro, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and then you're done. You can move on to a new podcast and start another show completely. Does that mean that that podcast that you created with a beginning, middle, and end is not as valuable as a podcast that releases an episode every week? I challenge that. And I challenge the people who tell people that to reconsider what you're saying. Podcasting does not have to be a single podcast that you do every week for the rest of your life. Podcasting can have a beginning, middle, and end, and then move to a new show. You can do that. And that does not mean you're not successful. If you create a podcast that has great content, then you don't need to worry about not producing an episode. And don't let people shame you for not creating content for a show that could have a beginning, middle, and end. So pod fade typically refers more to the gradual or sudden just stopping of your podcast. And the other, the key point that I want to highlight, I think pod fade is the distinguishing factor about pod fade is that there's no announcement and there's no intention of ending the show. It's kind of just on pause and nobody knows if you're coming back. You've never explained it. You never talked to your audience about it. And we're just kind of waiting. That could encompass pod fate because there hasn't been a logical conclusion to your podcast. Okay, I understand that. That makes sense. It often occurs that podcasters lose motivation over time and maybe they run out of ideas for their show or they just become overwhelmed with the whole process of creating a podcast and they're like, this is, this is hard work. And they just stop podcasting. So what pod fade is not, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Don't be confused with what some people are saying podcast, pod fading is, because it's not actually what people are saying in the space. Pod fade is not intentionally ending a podcast. Creating a show with a planned beginning, middle, and end is a valid podcasting strategy. This is similar, again, like we mentioned, to authors who complete a book and then move on to a new project. Pod fading is not taking a break. That's not pod fading. That's taking a break. Podcasters may choose to take temporary hiatus from their podcast for many reasons. You got personal commitments, you have a new baby, you have a new job, a job change, a health issue... Those are things that can come up in your in your podcasting life and your career and and things and it could have an impact on your show. So pot fade is not taking a break. And pot fade is not shifting your focus. Moving on to a new project after fully exploring a topic and doesn't necessarily constitute pod fade. Especially if the existing content remains valuable to the listeners into the future, that's nothing to look down on. Like I'm hearing other gurus who look down on people for not reproducing an episode on a regular, consistent basis till the end of time. So the big thing here in creating content is we really need to have valuable evergreen content. And this evergreen podcast content can continue to serve audiences long after the initial release date of your podcast. Your podcast has legs. It's got a long shelf life. Uh, you look at a, a loaf of bread, you have a little tag on the end of the bag, and it'll give you a, do, a date. 
best before this date, right? And then after that, the bread gets a little funky. Well, your podcast has a really long expiration date, especially if you're doing something that lasts into the future. If you're doing a news podcast based on the daily news or a sporting podcast that only talks about yesterday's game, okay, maybe there's a little bit of a shorter runway for evergreen content for that kind of stuff. But if you're doing something that is future-proof, your audience is going to fall in love with this for a long time. So how do we do this? How do we create great, valuable, evergreen content? Just create lasting value for your listeners when you come to each episode. And try to keep things open and not so time-bound. Build a library of timeless episodes. Things that will have legs into the future. And then attract new audiences over time through search and discovery. What a delight for someone to find a new podcast and they have more than 10 episodes because they've been doing this for a while. And you can go back in time and listen to the podcaster develop and grow and the show changing. And you feel like you're a part of something bigger when you can go back in time and do that. So let's rethink podcast success as a measurement as a a milestone, as a marker. Instead of shaming podcasters for not maintaining a rigid publishing schedule, we should probably consider an alternative measure of success beyond releasing an episode every week. What about releasing an episode that has impact on people? Isn't that more important than just releasing an episode because it's Monday? What about measuring success of your podcast based on the quality of your content? When people come and they feel like they got something out of this, more than you talking about your day or what you had for dinner or what your cat did this morning, great, but what's in there for me as a listener? Measure, Measure the success of your podcast based on the quality of the content. And then maybe also rethink your podcast success by measuring the longevity of the relevance of what you talk about. Will this episode today that I'm recording right now have impact on someone years from now? I hope so. That's the idea behind this, is that what we talk about here will last for a long time. So whether you're listening to this episode the day it's released, a month later, or five years from now, I'm hoping you're finding value in the content. So another way we can look at all this too is just to embrace podcast diversity. The podcasting landscape should embrace all kinds of formats for podcast releases. We have our traditional, maybe weekly episodes that go out every week, 52 weeks a year, and we do that on and on and on. That's one way. But it's not the only way, and it's not the best way. It's one way of doing it. And you don't have to do that if that doesn't work for your schedule. There's other ways to do our releases for our podcast to stay relevant and to have a vibrant podcast that grows. You can do limited series. Again, that have a beginning, middle, and end. Think of a television show. And you're doing a a response, kind of recap of each episode of the TV series. There you have a beginning, middle, and end. Even your favorite TV show will have an end date and they'll stop making the show. Does that mean that the show's terrible? No, they have reruns, they play it again. So, but as a response podcast about a podcast about a show, you might not have the opportunity to talk about this forever because the show might end. You can also do seasonal shows. Like I told you, I have my Santa Claus show for kids. Uh, You can also do sports sporadic type releases based on content availability. Maybe there's nothing happening in your world around the topic of your podcast, so you don't have to just make up something to have a released podcast. When you're, when things happen, things happen. Some podcasters just release it whenever they want to, and how often as they want, or how least often as they want. I think by broadening our understanding of what constitutes a successful podcast, we can really encourage creativity and other fellow podcasters and kind of reduce this pressure on us as podcasters, as creators, to maintain an unsustainable production schedule. 
I, sh I share this a lot with people that I talk to in coaching calls, that there are no half twos in podcast. There's no, there's nobody, you shouldn't have anyone coming to you saying you have to do it this way. And this is the only way to do it. There isn't. When somebody says have to, they're a gatekeeper. And gatekeepers are not part of podcasting. Gatekeepers keep people out of podcasting. And we want more people to come to this than to be forced out. So you'll never hear on this podcast that you have to do something. There's great suggestions from our co-hosts. There's great suggestions in the content about what you can do. But you have to take what works for you and leave the rest. If, this does, if something you hear on this show from a co-host or myself doesn't work for you in the way you do your podcast, you shouldn't feel guilty for that. But listen to somebody else's opinion and then make the best call for your show. You are in charge of your show. Nobody else. And I just don't want people to be shamed for pod fading when in fact they're taking a break. When in fact they're just there's something that's come up in their life and they have to pause their podcast for a few weeks or a month or so. Don't be don't feel guilty for that. And remember, this is a free medium for your audience. I'm sure they're gonna be fine if you take a break. But I think the biggest part of pod fading is when you don't tell the audience what's going on. They just you just disappear and they don't hear from you. Think about this as we wrap up. You're building a relationship with your audience, even though you can't see them. They come, they listen, they enjoy your podcast, they get to know you, and you become a companion to them in their day. You become something they look forward to. They love the sound of your voice. They love your insights, your little jokes, the things you say. They love how you do your show. And they feel like they know you because they've listened to you in an intimate setting, one-on-one, -on -one, just you and them. So they have this attachment to you and a feeling like they want to be part of your community and part of your life. They want to know you more. And then all of a sudden, you just don't show up. If you were dating a person and you just didn't answer any calls and didn't call them back or didn't show up, all of a sudden you'd be, conf you'd be confused and worried. Uh, something that, <laughs> did I do something? Like, why are you not coming back? So think of it in those terms that there's a relationship bond being built with you over time with your audience. And you need to do everything you can to treasure that, value that, and communicate. All relationships hinge on communication. And I'm just encouraging you to communicate with your audience. And don't let pod fade be something you're afraid of. Again, take the breaks you need to take. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Your audience will be fine. You can always build your audience. When you get back to podcasting, take a break. I would much rather you show up to your next episode refreshed, ready, and full of inspiration than to show up defeated, exhausted, and just completely out of ideas. Who do you think is going to, ex what kind of a, uh, experience is going to be for your audience if you show up exhausted and you don't want to be here? I don't think you're going to connect in a meaningful way to anyone in that state. So take care of yourself, honor yourself, allow yourself to breathe, and don't let anybody pressure you and make you feel guilty for missing your regular cadence of your podcast. Just keep in mind, though, that people love you. People love what you do, and they admire what you do. And not everybody's a podcaster. So they don't understand what's happening behind the scenes. And all they know is that they really do love what you do in this world. And they want the best for you. So let them know. Jump on, say, everybody, we're going to, you know, I've been doing this podcast for X number of years or X number of months or weeks. And, you know, I've been doing two a week and it's just a lot. So I'm going to go down to one. I'm fine, by the way. I'm good. I'm just, I want to let you know we're going down to one episode a week. Just, we're going to do it on this date. I just want to let you know that's what's happening. And people are, will be fine. They'll adjust their schedule. Give your audience a reason to come back. And do that through great content, through great connections, and through great communication. That way your audience knows what you're doing, where we're going, and how they can support you 
And if you want to support this show, as always, howtopodcast.ca is the website. But what I have in the show notes just for you is a link into my calendar as a listener, as a part of the community of the How to Podcast family. You can jump in my calendar anytime. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny. And we can talk about anything that you want to talk about. If there's an episode that you want to review that we've done in the past and you want to talk more detail about something that's shared here, you want to talk about your show. You want to talk about starting a show. You have questions about anything. I will share every resource I have. I will give time to you and help you for one reason. I want to meet you and I want to talk to you and I want to be there for you and help you in your journey. So use that link. It's only here on the podcast. It's not on my website. It's only for you because you've listened to the show up to this point. And thank you for doing that because what you're doing right now by listening to me speak in this moment is you're telling the app that you're listening on that this is a good podcast because you're still here. And if we can increase that length of time that people listen to our show to the end of every episode, that's a great indication to YouTube, Spotify, Apple, whatever, that you're in the right place and that this isn't a podcast worth listening to. So you're doing something great for me right now. You don't need to rate and review this show. You're already doing something awesome just by listening to this part of the podcast. So thanks. Reach out through howtopodcast.ca. Come join our meetups on a regular basis. You can find that on the website. But most importantly, in the show notes, grab that link, jump in my calendar, and let's get together and talk. We'd love to be there for you. Don't worry about pod fading. Do your best. Keep going. Take a break when you need to. And if you need any help, let me know. Thanks for being here. Remember, record, share, repeat. Talk soon. So you're a podcaster. And you podcast alone. You are in your home. You're in your studio. You're in your closet. And you podcast. And you put everything out there in the world and you're thinking, man... I'd love to meet another podcaster and not feel so alone. I wish there was a way to meet up with other podcasters and talk about my journey, ask my questions in a safe place where others there are also podcasters at different levels. Some people have been doing this a long time. Maybe some podcasters are brand new like me. And I'd love to be able to ask questions and do community with others. Maybe find a guest for my show or be a guest and ask a question that's bothering me about podcasting that I haven't seen or already got an answer to. I wish there was a group for me. Dave, do you know of a group where they do all of that and they do group hugs, virtual group hugs? Yeah, 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 we do. It's it's our meetup. And, and you know, guess what? You're invited to come to our meetups. They are amazing. Not because of me, by any stretch of imagination, it's because they're great because of the people who show up. You're going to meet some of the nicest podcasters you've ever met. There's no judgment. There's no talking down to you. It's not about me. It's about the group. And there's many times where I don't even have to talk. Each of the people coming bring great expertise and insights that can help you grow your show, to help you be a better person. And they're there to support you. It's our meetups. And you can find them at their howtopodcast.ca website. Come join us. There's over 200 people in our group. And we'd love to have you there. Lots of room for you. Come be a part of our meetups and meet other podcasters. Don't do it alone. Podcasting should never be done alone. Come join us. Howtopodcast.ca. See you at our meetups.